Hello, Isabella. Thank you for Hi, joining us today. Better. Uh, so just a quick reminder, you're a permanent faculty member here in, uh, in Schema uh, in marketing and, uh, and uh, business development uh, and you are Italian and an, Italian and an expert on emotions. Okay. I don't yeah. know if there's a combination there that's necessary. But, uh, um, and I wanted us to talk today about emotions. I've been talking a lot with my students about uh, services, about the emotional labour aspect of services, about managing experiences. Um, we've been looking at companies like Disney, which are selling happiness and things like that. Um, and it seems to me that emotion is there. In, in marketing now, uh, in the offerings from companies. Uh, but I suspect that we, uh, there's a lot more to it uh, than we imagine. Uh, and as you, this is your area of expertise, I, I wanted to, to, to talk to you about that today. Um, first question, obvious question, do we know exactly what we're talking about when we say emotion? What is emotion? Yes, emotion is something that was in, not invented by marketing manager. It's something that uh, we derive from uh, psychology. Mm -hmm. And we can define emotion as an affective state. Mm -hmm. uh, we feel an emotion when we think about something, uh, something that is related to our personal life. Uh, we feel, uh, we, we call this thinking about something appraisal in psychology. Mm -hmm. As after this appraisal, we feel this affective state uh, and consequently we, we act. So emotions are very powerful because uh, they lead to action, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, emotion is one of the possible affective states. It's important to, in psychology, but also in marketing, to distinguish emotions by mood, for example, or, or uh, by other personality traits. Um, for example, mood uh, is something that is long lasting. Uh, emotion is uh, short in time. And referring to mood, uh, sometimes uh, it's difficult to uh, really think an appraisal. Sometimes we feel happy or sad, but we don't know why. When you feel an emotion, normally we know why. If we are sad because uh, we didn't succeed an exam, we know because we are sad. Mm -hmm. For so, so, there's, so there's a cause and then there's an effect. And, yes. and the other thing for, well, that's interesting for us is that, it, as you say, it leads to action. And that action, in a lot of cases, would be purchasing uh, or something like that with it. Yes, or a positive attitude toward a product or a positive word of mouth or uh, the decision to be loyal to a company, for example. Mm -hmm. That's why emotions are very important in marketing. Because if we uh, believe in the cognitive theory of emotion, it means if we believe that uh, uh, emotions are, uh, are um, elicited by appraisal and they lead to action, if we believe in that, it means that, uh, let's say, marketing managers, uh, they could uh, manipulate emotions in order to obtain a specific action. Okay, and this is where it gets interesting and complicated at the same time, isn't it? That, uh, yeah. You know, I mean, how, if I'm a, imagine I'm a marketing manager, I'm a brand manager, um, and I decide that I'm going to manage, manipulate, depending on the way you see it, I suppose, uh, uh, emotions. Uh, I mean, how easy is this? Um, pretty yeah. tricky things to mess with, aren't they? Yeah, in theory it's easy, but in practice it's very difficult because emotions are complex. Uh, for example, it's difficult to determine a specific emotions because emotion, they appear in cluster. For example, sometimes when we are in love, we are also jealous and, and it's really difficult to, to distinguish, for example, from uh, between uh, love and jealousy. So emotions, they appear in cluster and marketing manager on the other side, they are interested in specific emotions. And then uh, uh, culturally speaking, uh, emotions are complex because in different cultures, for example, different emotions are more important than, than others. For example, in some cultures, we have some words uh, that define emotions that we don't have in other cultures. Think about the saudade, that is a sort of uh, melancholy in, uh, in, in Portuguese, a melancholy, a mix of melancholy, sadness and nostalgia, thinking about a glorious past, but we don't have this translation, for example, in English or, or in Italian. Mm -hmm. So there are for sure um, three causes of uh, complexity. The cultural one, let's say, the fact that the emotions, they appear in cluster. And um, another element of complexity that is uh, uh, critical for marketing managers is that uh, we manipulate an appraisal in order to elicit an emotion. But if we do it a second time or a time number three, we are not sure to obtain the same result. For example, uh, uh, you go for the first time to Disneyland, uh, you are surprised. If you go for a second time or, or, or for another time, and maybe you will be satisfied, satisfied, but not surprised anymore. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the repetition doesn't, doesn't guarantee uh, the same kind of emotion we obtained the first time. 
So in a sense, if, if I'm selling happiness, I've almost got to raise the bar every exactly. time. You know, if you're exactly. going to come back, if you're a returning customer, and exactly. even worse, if it's surprise, uh, how do I keep on surprising you? Yeah. As well? uh, yes. In, the, in we, we now we talk about surprise management, but managing the surprise management is very difficult because yeah. of that. Okay. I mean, there are obvious emotions like happiness. I mean, these are the things that are nice to sell, aren't they? Happiness mm -hmm. and pleasure and all of these sort of things. Um, but uh, we've seen, uh, I mean, if you look, if you take the example of Disneyland, mm -hmm. I mean, a day at Disney uh, is full of different sorts of experiences, uh, challenges, uh, uh, frustrations as well uh, yeah. on your way to happiness. I mean, there's a lot of queuing. Uh, yes. I mean, Lord knows what sort of emotions are elicited by, by queuing. Um, so you can see that there's a lot more in there. Um, so so w what are the different emotions that we would normally consider if we are looking at it from a marketing point yeah. of view? The most studied emotion in marketing is customer satisfaction. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, hundreds of ways, for example, to, to elicit the satisfaction and to measure satisfaction. On the other hand, there are other emotions that are very important for marketing managers, but are less studied. But in the practice, uh, they are very used. And sometimes we want to elicit them, uh, or sometimes we want to decrease them, for example. Think about the negative emotions. Think about uh, the, the, the sense of guilt. If you are uh, managing a social cause, maybe you are interested in illicit uh, anticipated guilt mm -hmm. uh, because you want to obtain donation. But on the other end, for example, if you sell luxury products, maybe uh, an idea can be to decrease the sense of guilt. Here, Peter, for you, I have an example mm -hmm. that I want to show you. Yeah. This is, for example, um, oh, I recognize an, that, yeah. an advertisement by Pate Philippe. And uh, this is a very expensive uh, brand of watch. Mm -hmm. And uh, they found in this, uh, bo this body copy is uh, quite clever. They are trying uh, to decrease the sense of guilt in, uh, in uh, the anticipated sense of guilt uh, in, uh, in the future owner. Mm -hmm. So in a nice way, they are telling you that you don't buy uh, the Pate Philippe uh, just for yourself. So it's, uh, it's, uh, you, you are not wasting your money because it's a sort of value that you can transfer to the next generation. So it's not an egoistic sort of pleasure, it's a self-satisfaction, it's, it's, yeah. it's an investment for the... I, for you see, I, I'd never seen that, I'd never seen the guilt aspect in that. I always saw the, yes, the fact of, that it's of the course, next generation. Of course, they are able to decrease it if they are not explicit in that. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why this, this advertisement is, I, I, I find it quite, uh, quite clever. And here the idea is to decrease uh, an emotion you may feel. Of course, you can also play a bit uh, with uh, this, uh, this tentative to decrease the sense of guilt. This is a, a, a French campaign. This is um, a chat uh, that is dedicated to married people, especially to, to women. And they are uh, explaining you that having a lover is, uh, is uh, less costly for the society if we think about uh, the possible cost of uh, uh, la sécurité sociale en français, the security. Uh, it was the healthcare. Yeah, yeah the healthcare yeah, yeah, in, uh, yeah. Yeah, in English. Mm -hmm. So again, it's the same principle. Uh, maybe you don't, don't, feel, don't feel guilty if you have a lover because uh, you are not doing uh, something very bad. It's good for you. Yeah. So in this case, the, the, the appraisal of guilt uh, is the violation of a principle. And here they are explaining you that you are not uh, violating anything, actually. Although, although played with there on, on a very different, in, a, in a very different tone. I mean, in the first, it's much more straightforward, I suppose, in a way. Uh, whereas here, it, it, there's a sense of humor, isn't yes. there? There's a sense of irony and a bit of yes. distance and so on. And, uh, of course, again, you cannot be very, very direct and very explicit. You have to play mm -hmm. a bit with that. Okay. So, for example, this is uh, the sense of guilt. Uh, you can uh, decide uh, for, uh, in some situation, to arise it, uh, and in other situation, you can decide you want to lower it, mm -hmm. in order again to obtain a specific action. Okay. In this case, is to subscribe a website. In the other case, was uh, to buy a watch. Mm -hmm. And there are other uh, intriguing uh, emotion that, as marketing manager, you want to manipulate. There is another uh, interesting emotion that is uh, that is embarrassment, for example. And some market managers, they want to increase it. They want to increase uh, the uh, anticipated embarrassment you may feel in order to sell a specific product. Here, Peter, for you, I have a couple of examples about... Uh, Inside. Thank you. Increasing uh, embarrassment. You're sitting in seat 2A. I wonder who will be sitting next to you in seat 2B. Your seat, sir. Hey. Thank you. 
Good evening. Good evening. It's Henry Kissinger. Ready for a good chat? Again, here the use of, emotion, of emotional appeal is mixed with a sense of humor. And mm. this is a very British campaign, we can say. And here, uh, if you are so lucky to have Eric Kissinger close to you, you, you have to have a nice chat, a nice conversation with yeah. him. And in order to decrease this uh, possible anticipated embarrassment, uh, a good way is to read The Economist, for mm. example. Mm -hmm. Another example, but uh, in, uh, in uh, the practice, we can find a lot of them. Geox, la scarpa che respira. Here we have an Italian brand of shoes uh, that um, propose as benefit a transpirational uh, mm. element in, in the shoes uh, that could uh, avoid uh, the embarrassment you may feel in, uh, in such a kind of situation. So again, the idea is to elicit uh, in the viewer uh, an anticipated embarrassment that is uh, related to a very common situation and to offer the solution in order to not feel be specific negative emotion. If, if I may say so, the, the, here the, the, the embarrassment side uh, on the guilt side is, is, is played with it, uh, in, in a very humoristic sort of way. But if you look at early adv advertising uh, for all sorts of things, I mean, whether it be deodorant, whether it be uh, sort of, you know, washing uh, and so on and so on, there's an awful lot of play on guilt there, isn't it? I mean, social guilt almost. I mean, you know, if you don't use this deodorant, you will never, I've seen somewhere a suggestion is that a woman will never find a husband. You know, why hasn't she got a husband? Well, because she smells bad and so on. So there's, there's a long tradition of that kind of guilt and, and embarrassment based uh, advertising, isn't there? Sure. And uh, now that we have also some study that uh, try to correlate the level of a specific emotion, the intensity of a specific emotion and the, and the potential effect. Mm -hmm. And for example, with, um, with regard to guilt and embarrassment, they demonstrated that uh, when the, 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 the emotion is, is, uh, is too strong, uh, the effect uh, are not uh, positive for marketing managers. Mm -hmm. So it's better to, to elicit, a, 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 um, let's say, an average uh, mm. level of uh, this, uh, this emotion. We've been looking at service experiences and, uh, and the complexity of, of managing those services, uh, service experiences. Um, I can imagine that, uh, I mean, so it's all very well talking about things like happiness when you go to Disney and so on and so on. Uh, but there are all sorts of other service situations which actually are probably not very pleasant. I mean, I'm thinking, um, I don't associate banks with a pleasant experience. Uh, air, air, air travel, I mean, there's an awful lot of air travel, which is, which is rather um, uncomfortable and, and not always very pleasant at all. Um, how, how does emotion help us to manage those, those customer journeys and, and those different customer, customer experiences? According to marketing managers, uh, these environments, this space, uh, they could be theater. Uh, on which you can play with the different elements, with the different touch points in order to elicit uh, uh, an incredible variety of uh, possible emotion and not only uh, happiness or, or satisfaction. And uh, there are a lot of studies about uh, that. They are done by, um, we call them an environmental psychologists. Mm -hmm. And now some marketing scholars uh, are using the same theory in order to study, for example, banks, uh, supermarkets, uh, websites. Also a website is a space, mm -hmm. it's a potential uh, experiential space, or uh, for example, events and so on. And they found out that uh, there are three kinds of, uh, of uh, emotion that we may feel uh, when uh, we leave a space. And uh, we can, uh, actually they are not emotions, but cluster of emotion. We have a cluster of pleasure. And so you have to imagine the pleasure and also the opposite side is pleasure. We have the cluster of arousal and the opposite of arousal is boredom. And then we have also the, the cluster of dominance. Dominance is uh, the sense of control we can have. And on the other end, we have a sense of fear. Mm -hmm. And marketing managers, they can uh, manipulate uh, with these three clusters of emotion using uh, the different uh, touch points. 
for example. Mm -hmm. But touch points, uh, if you think, uh, uh, for example, a supermarket are the windows, the display, uh, the use of the visual merchandising, uh, the use of the category management, uh, the layout, uh, and uh, of course also the people that, uh, mm -hmm. that uh, work in a, in a specific space. Mm -hmm. People actually, they, they, they play a very important role. Some, just, just take something as simple as a queue. I mean, again, we've been looking at Disney and, and, and I mean, thinking of banks and all sorts of places. I mean, supermarkets. I mean, we all, part of our consumption experience is queuing. Uh, I mean, how, how do emotions come into something like that? And how could we manage that queue situation yeah. uh, in a way which would make it more agreeable or at least less, less uh, unpleasant? Yes, Q, for example, are um, related to two negative emotions. Uh, one is uh, the lack of dominance, because you don't know for how long you are going to wait. So you have a sense, really, of a lack of uh, control. And on the other end, also the displeasure, because you have also the feeling to, to waste uh, your time. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can reverse this uh, kind of negative emotions in positive uh, using uh, these cues in an in a, in a, uh, interesting way. I have uh, the, an example I have in mind is the Expo in Milan we had uh, this year and uh, as you may know we had a long queue in order to see the most uh, beautiful uh, places, the most beautiful countries and uh, some countries they decided to use the queues actually to entertain people. If I think about uh, the, the, the area of the Kazakhstan uh, they used dancers and singers in order to entertain people uh, mm -hmm. before visiting uh, the specific area. So this is a way to transform, for example, this pleasure in pleasure. Mm -hmm. Or uh, if we want to be uh, more simple, uh, think about the use of numbers in a supermarket. It's, yes. a, way, it's a way to, to elicit a sense of control in people that are waiting for, uh, for, uh, for being served. You don't get the feeling that someone else is getting there yeah. before you or, yeah, exactly. or that one queue is going faster than another queue uh, exactly. and so on and so on. Um, how the hell do you measure emotions? I mean, do, do we have scale? I mean, how, how do we actually, how do we do that? How do we measure happiness? How do we, is it a surprise and so on? I mean, there's, there's got to be some way of doing it. First of all, we have, uh, for each product and each service, uh, we have to find out uh, which kind of emotions are relevant in our business. And in order to do so, so that if the question is, which kind of affective states are relevant for me, we have to do a qualitative research. And we can, for example, uh, adopt adopt an ethnographic approach or doing focus group or doing in-depth interview in order to find out uh, which emotions are important. When you want to measure emotions, uh, you have a, a traditional way to, to do that. Uh, you can, uh, you can uh, prepare a survey, for example, uh, if people are able to explicit their emotion, that is, we cannot take it for granted, or we can, uh, uh, for example, organize and, and create experiments. Uh, now it's quite trendy to, uh, to talk about neuromarketing. As mm -hmm. you can say, neuromarketing is, um, is composed by a um, number of techniques that are used in order to picture our brain while we are feeling a specific emotion. It's a very intriguing uh, area. It's a very intriguing field. On the other end, we have a picture, but, uh, but we don't know uh, what's behind. Mm -hmm. So we don't know the origin. We, we, we know that if a specific area of our brain is, uh, is, uh, inter is interested by, by, by the measurement tool, it means that we are feeling a specific emotion, but we don't know why we are feeling that specific emotion. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's interesting, for sure, our brain, uh, specific areas of, of our brain are correlated with uh, specific, uh, specific emotions, and this was demonstrated years ago by um, psychiatrist, a famous psychiatrist in US, Damasio, that um, mm. studied a number of cases uh, in which people, they had damages in the brain mm. and they were not able for that, they were not able to feel specific emotion. They had a normal life without feeling emotions. Okay. What, what, what are the sources of leverage that you might have uh, if you were trying to manage an experience um, that had uh, a, well, a certain emotional uh, impact? Uh, I don't know, imagine you were trying to, imagine you, you, you were called in by Disney and Disney hmm. said, look, you know, we want you to, or Starbucks or whatever, we want you to make this a happy, happy experience. We, we're, we're in the yeah. business of happiness. Now, what are all the different things that are going to impact me as a consumer in that experience uh, that you could bring into play so that it would have some sort of positive impact there? Yeah, the, the, the first thing I suggest to do is to, to um, 
list and count uh, all the touch points, so all the, all the moments in which uh, the, the customer is interacting with a person or with a specific service or in a specific area. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, uh, these uh, touch points are related to senses. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can play with a sensory market in order to elicit a specific emotion. For sure, we can uh, use music. For sure, we can use mails, for example. Mm -hmm. For sure, we can use colors when we organize the visual merchandising. For sure, we can uh, use category management in order to guarantee a sense of control. Uh, the, lay the different layouts, uh, different messages in the supermarket, and a, a, a very good way in order to elicit positive emotion is to train uh, very well people that are working for us and that, that, that are in contact with, uh, with, uh, with people. Yeah, so we come back to this people element in, in, in services. Yeah. Um, what, one last point, I, I, I've discussed a little bit with my students, but, but not, not an awful lot, this notion of um, emotional labour that you get in, uh, in, in services as well. I mean, the idea that people who are in service situations, air hostesses, uh, waiters and so on, um, are, are actually um, giving not just products and services, but actually, in, in a sense, projecting their emotions um, and, and giving an awful lot of themselves in that. Uh, you know, the idea being that that is actually quite a difficult thing to do as well, yeah. uh, consistently. I mean, how, how, would you, how could you help people in that kind of situation to do their jobs better? Yeah, um, it's the same problem we have uh, as a teacher, if, if, you think, uh, if you think about it. Um, a possible uh, problem of opportunity in uh, being in contact with, peop with people is uh, what we call uh, in, uh, in uh, psychology emotional contagion. So we are uh, touched by emotions that, are, uh, uh, that, are, uh, that other people are, they are living. And uh, of course, uh, uh, there are training, uh, specific training in order to avoid or to protect uh, these, uh, these safe people from uh, the emotional contagion. For example, it's, uh, if you think, uh, it's very natural for a salesperson answer with anger to an angry customer. Mm -hmm. and, but they have specific training in order to, 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 to protect themselves and to avoid this kind of behavior. Mm. And then, of course, there's group emotion. I mean, we've been talking about the individual, but uh, I mean, you know, we've all been to concerts, we've all been to uh, various yeah. situations where, in fact, you, know, you talk about contagion there, uh, where it's the interaction and, and the sort of, I mean, is, is, is there, a, is, is there a, a, an easy link between individual and group emotion, or is group emotion a different kind of phenomenon? It's a different kind of phenomenon, actually, and uh, they are very interesting when you study, for example, all the communities. Think about mm. uh, the Harley Davidson riders, or think about them another group, the Ducati riders. Mm. Uh, the, the emotions that are living with people are mostly group emotions mm. and uh, the, 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 the group life, uh, it plays a bigger role compared to the fact that you are an owner of a motorcycle, for example. Mm. And uh, this, uh, these communities are, um, are, are um, studied by marketing manager, especially with, um, in this case, with uh, an ethnographic approach. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, so lots to think about, and certainly if emotion is an essential part of your value proposition, uh, then it's not as easy as it might sound, obviously, a lot to think about there. Um, but thank you very much indeed. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs>